is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 bmw m3 courtesy of apple bmw in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so obviously i wanted to hop in this one not just because it is an M3, but because it is an all new M3 for the 2021 model year. Not only that, it actually still offers a manual transmission, although we don't actually have it today, but still, the fact that it still offers a manual in this day and age is absolutely amazing as well. And there's some freaking cool colors available for this one, including the Isle of Man green metallic that we do happen to have here today, which is pretty cool. But in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the new 2021 BMW M3 will start at $69,900, but then there is the M3 competition, which actually is the one we have today. This one is going to start at $72,800. But making our way then to the power plant powering this beast will come from a three liter twin power turbocharged inline six cylinder, putting out 473 horsepower at around 6,200 RPM, 406 pound feet of torque around 2,600 rpm power sent to the rear wheels through a six speed manual zero to 60 time for that m3 comes in at 4.1 seconds top speed at 180 miles per hour if you were to go with the m drivers package which goes for 2500 by the way if you wanted that but mpg numbers are going to come in then at 16 in the city 23 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but like i said we have the competition here today, so we actually do get a bit more power with this particular configuration. That power is going to be the same engine setup, but with 503 horsepower at around 6,200 RPM, 479 pound-feet of torque coming in at approximately 2,700 RPM, power sent to all four wheels through BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters and launch control. We will test out the paddle shifters in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time for the competition coming in at 3.8 seconds that is wonderful and what's even more wonderful is i bet you there's not going to be any slippage we're going to test that out a little bit here too but so before we get all into that as we are still sitting at this long red light here do want to mention there are some drive modes this drive mode buttons are going to be located kind of directly behind the shifter there and those driving modes will include not only your standard road mode but also a sport mode and also a drift worthy rear wheel drive mode if you don't go with the rear wheel drive configuration to start with that is but even if you were to go with this all wheel drive setup that we have here in the competition you can still put it at 100 percent power sent to the rear wheels if you wanted to so really in my mind this is the best of both worlds right here from the start but anyways those driving modes of course will adjust things like the shift points at least if you go with the eight speed automatic that we have today also throttle response and the steering sensitivity as well so what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in that sport mode and let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here to start and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right paddle shifter test in three two one good grief yeah they're dang quick BMW always have quick reacting paddle shifters. I actually said that when I walked into BMW the other day. They have the quickest reacting paddle shifters. They're right up there with any paddle shifters you can really think of, whether it be Porsche's PDK transmission or Maserati, it doesn't matter. BMW has insanely quick reacting paddle shifters without a doubt. So definitely a quite nice acceleration and incredibly quick paddle shifters there. But so anyways, I'm going to give back full control now to the M3. I'm simply just gonna slide the shifter back to the right there and so, Having said that, we will get to the acceleration here yet again in a second, but I did want to touch on the braking real quick because, of course, that is equally important. Up front, you will find 15-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 14.5-inch ventilated rear discs. Six piston front calipers as well. And not only that, you can actually change the color of those front calipers between blue, red, and black, which I thought is pretty cool. Braking feel is extremely touchy this is one of the first things i noticed when i first got in this thing these brakes bite and they bite freaking hard 60 to zero stopping distance has got to come in right around 100 feet even if not less there are some amazing brakes here on the m3 i can tell you guys that without a doubt not to mention there's also m carbon ceramic brakes that go for eight thousand one hundred fifty dollars if you wanted even better braking power 
which is insane to even think of because the braking feel is absolutely amazing on this car. But nonetheless, touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna find a double joint spring strut front axle, in the back five link rear axle, aluminum suspension arms and wheel carriers, adaptive M suspension coming standard on the M3 as well. I love adaptive suspensions. Essentially, that gives you the best of both worlds. Not only tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering, but also adjusts to the road imperfections, giving you a much smoother ride as well. As far as ride quality goes, it's pretty much as expected. You do feel a bit more of the road than if you were to drive a BMW X5, let's say, but Again, that's to be expected. This is a sports sedan after all, really can't expect anything less than that. Steering feel is amazing, especially when you put it in that sport driving mode. Definitely a heavier weight to it. Instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go, so no issues there for me. Cabin noise is wonderful, and I say that because there's actually a button that I have pressed that actually opens up the valves on the exhaust system, letting out a much deeper growl. And we will get to that exhaust clip as well in a little bit here, so be sure you stay tuned for that. But now having said that what do you guys say let's get back onto the road here and let's do a uh, let's do a quick little acceleration test with the car having full control and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 BMW M3 here up to speed three two one there's a car coming behind us here we go go <laughs> oh my gosh there it is oh my gosh okay yeah that it's freaking quick it is freaking quick without a doubt this car is wonderful this car is freaking wonderful and it's freaking special this is an m3 it's an absolutely wonderful car that is oh my gosh the driving dynamics are amazing but did want to also mention when it comes to visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back you're never really going to have any issues with sedans anyways and you do get rain sensing windshield wipers also coming standard on the m3 as well which is wonderful but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 BMW M3. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 BMW M3. Before we even get into the front grille, let me touch on the colors real quick, because there are some amazing color options for the new M3, including Isle of Man Green Metallic, which of course is what we have today. There's also San Paulo Yellow and Port Mau Blue Metallic, which got me thinking, these are all kind of cities and towns across the world. So Isle of Man, you guys probably know, is located between the UK and Ireland. And then San Paulo is a city in Brazil. And Portimao is a town in Portugal. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but that is pretty cool that they're naming it after places around the world. But anyways, I definitely love the color here we have on our M3. But now let's go ahead and start up front with this new controversial front grille. And let me tell you guys, when you see it in person, it does make a huge difference. It looks so much more in your face and aggressive in person. It will change your mind, I guarantee you, when you see this one in person. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of the front grille in the comment section right now. Go ahead and smash the like button if you're a fan of it. Go ahead and smash the like button if you're not a fan of it so we know how many opinions we have on this front grille. But anyways, black twin slats, of course, looks good up there. There is that M3 competition logo found in the upper portion of that front grille as well. LED headlights to the sides, of course, coming standard. And they do come with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams, of course, as well, meaning when a car is coming in the opposite direction and you have your high beams on, it is gonna dim that back to low beams. And then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna put it back up to high beams yet again. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about there as well. And of course, LED daytime running lights to go along with that. And then if you look down towards the corners there, let me show you guys, actually, let me get a little closer. You do have front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. So wanted to show that to you guys. And just around there as well, you do have the shadow line exterior trim. So all in all, let me tell you in person, it looks absolutely amazing. And almost didn't want to even forget here. Look at these creases on the front portion of the hood. This is so in your face. It's like nothing else on the road right now. I think that is why I love it. It's so unique, especially with this color. But anyways, definitely a good looking front end. I don't care what people say. When you see it in person, guarantee you it will change your mind. But let's go ahead now and make our way to the side of the m3 here so now making our way to the side first thing i wanted to mention to you guys i'm gonna give you a close-up shot here carbon fiber roof 
coming standard. Of course, that's a typical M3 thing and I absolutely love it. Of course, you have shadow line exterior trim surrounding the windows. Also have some shadow line accenting found in the front fender, of course, with the M3 competition logo yet again and that shadow line trim course continues on the side skirts and onto the back then as well but anyways enough with the shadow line trim let's make our way to the mirrors there they are gloss black power folding heated side mirrors with led integrated turret signals as well and i definitely like the design it's aerodynamically optimized so they have put that thing to the test so i do like the design and it actually is functional for the side mirrors as well so that's pretty cool they take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch front 19 inches in the back it's the standard configuration but then if you were to go with the competition that we have today it's going to be 19 inches in the front 20 inches in the back and there are of course going to be some optional wheel setups for both particular trim levels if you wanted to go with something different as well but definitely looks good i love the blue brake calipers i love the drilled rotors behind that as well so definitely a very menacing looking side profile to the m3 but now Let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. And so starting up top, you will find a gloss black shark fin antenna. When it comes to that rear spoiler, it is not carbon fiber. It is gloss black yet again. You do have the M3 competition logo once again found in the upper portion of that rear trunk. LED taillights do come standard on this one. Adaptive LED taillights, I should say, actually. Gloss black rear diffuser, like I was mentioning to you guys. This is one of the most menacing looking rear diffusers, by the way, I've seen in quite some time. But... Do you believe you guys know what we have to do next? Integrated into that rear diffuser, you will find a sport exhaust system with quad chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back of the M3 here, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are of course a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob itself. That is one way. There is also a button on the trunk itself. You simply just press that and it's gonna open up automatically. It's not something where you actually have to lift up under the trunk. You just press a button and it opens up. And there is a button on the driver's side door then as well. And then once the trunk is open, it's actually a button on the trunk itself. It is a power trunk, by the way. You just hit the button and it's gonna automatically close for you in case anybody was curious. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split. There's some levers in the trunk itself, which will fold down those rear seats. So it gives you a bunch of extra space then if you needed it. In the trunk itself, there is some LED cargo lighting back there as well. And there's a little bit of cubby space to the left and the right side in the back then as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom of the M3 that's going to come in at 35.6 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Did want to also mention rear ventilation does come standard on the M3 with tri-zone climate control, meaning driver, passenger, and whoever is in the back can also set their rear temperature as well. So that's pretty cool. I liked that. And there's actually two phone charging ports back there as well. They're not USB, but they're standard phone charging ports back there too. So overall, decent amount of space back there for what this car is. But then making our way to the front seats of the M3, 14-way power adjustable front seats is the standard setup that does include four-way power lumbar, power side bolsters as well. And my favorite part, the backlit M logo, which is going to illuminate at night or when you have the headlights on. I'm gonna pull into uh, an overhang here to see if I can show that to you guys, but that is pretty cool. Memory settings do come standard as well. These front seats will be heated. They do come standard with a leather finish. You can get ventilated seats as well. That is an option for an additional $350. It also comes with some of the package options as well, I should mention. There is an optional seating setup called M Carbon Bucket Seats that goes for $3,800 for a little better side bolsters to hold you in place a little better around the turns if you wanted to go with that. 
Overall though, the seats are plenty comfortable. You do have 14 way power adjustable seats. So really there's a ton of different configurations you could play around with it. So I personally had no issues with finding my perfect driving position with this one. But then let's take a look at the steering wheel. This is always one of my favorite parts really in any BMW for that matter. It is tilt and telescoping of course. It is manually adjustable by the way. I also wanted to mention that. It is leather wrapped. I do like the M colors stitched into the steering wheel as well. And we actually do have a heated steering wheel because because one of the package options that we have today, that heated steering wheel button, is located kind of above the M logo found towards the bottom there. So that is pretty cool. It is pretty cold out today. I should probably have turned that on, but of course the paddle shifters are actually aluminum as well. I like them on the left and the right side here. So overall steering wheel is plenty fine. The 10 and two grips, the 10 and two bolsters are super thick as expected. And really that's with BMW's M Sport package on most of their vehicles as well, even their SUVs. And I absolutely always love the grips or really any BMW. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You do have nothing on the one side of the key. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch. The lock button is going to be the BMW logo. And you got your M colors on the side of the key, of course, as well. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here, simply leave the key in my pocket and press that engine start button, which is red and located just to the left of the shifter there. And so once started up, it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster in typical BMW fashion. You do have your M3 designation found all the way to the top. I do like the Isle of Man green color that they illuminated at the beginning of those gauges specific to the color that we have today. That is pretty dang cool. Speedometer is going to be found on your left. It goes all the way up to 200 miles per hour, which I absolutely love. Tachometer is on your right. Did want to also mention something though I probably should have mentioned when I was driving. There is a wonderful head up display that I was looking at during my test drive there, which not only showed me the RPM meter, but also speed limit, also my speed, safety information, and it was huge absolutely huge head up display i was looking at so i like that too outside temperature anyways back to the regular gauges outside temperature you can check out up there how many miles you have left until you hit empty and if you were to press that m mode button found directly behind the push button start that is going to completely change the look of those gauges that is actually the gauge configuration setup i would leave it on because i think that looks dang cool and it's different you don't see this gauge setup on any other bmw right now so that is personally what i would leave it in so i did like that but now let's make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof is going to be a free option i think they made it free because the car already comes with a really cool carbon fiber roof which of course is deleted if you were to go with the moonroof, so your option there. Anthracite headliner does come standard auto dimming rear view mirror, universal garage door opener for up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of our frameless rear view mirror. I liked that design as well. Aluminum tetragon interior trim. I like that. It's pretty cool. It found just above the passenger side glove box there. Three zone climate control, as I was mentioning to you guys earlier. Also, you can adjust the multicolor ambient lighting on the infotainment screen. I'll get to that in a second, but the ambient lighting is always done very well in BMW. And I'm going to try to show that to you guys here as well, since I pulled into an overhang here. So that is pretty cool. Overall, honestly, I love it. BMW did a really good job with interior quality. The reason I say that, because a lot of times with other manufacturers, specifically around the circular dial and buttons and also the shift they leave it a matte plastic like a matte gray plastic which nobody likes it's a cheap look but with this you got gloss black finishes and not only that you have that cool aluminum design found surrounding those gloss black finishes so really it looks amazing this interior quality is really second to none it's done very very well also should mention just in front of the shifter you do have two cup holders a 12 volt power outlet usb charging port and wireless phone charger and a place to put your digital key so let me show that to you guys actually real quick here so this is your bmw digital key it kind of has a cool carbon fiber look to it as well I hope this is focusing on the key here and not me, so it should be. But anyways, this essentially is going to replace your standard key. If you wanted it to, you can use the standard key. That is perfectly fine as well. But if you didn't want to have those keys dangling in your pocket, just leave this in your wallet. You can use this to open and close the door and also 
put it on that wireless phone charger, that is how you're going to actually start this one up without the key. So I do like that BMW added that to this one as well. But anyways, as I was mentioning, now let's make our way to the tech display or the infotainment screen. It is a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display. It is touchscreen, of course. It is voice activated as well. And of course, there is the circular dial and buttons located just to the right of the shifter, which typically is what I tend to use with BMWs. Not that it's so much of a reach because it really isn't when you're sitting still, I guess. But this circular dial and buttons really is quite convenient when you're actually driving this one. But nonetheless, blue Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system, of course, also coming standard. Can, of course, check out your drive modes up there. Climate control settings can also be adjusted up there as well. Ambient lighting can be adjusted up there. And one of the cooler things, you can actually check out, they, they call it sport displays. You can check out your G-Force at any particular time if you wanted to leave that up there, your horsepower and torque at any particular time, your boost pressure and also the engine temp as well. I found that pretty cool. You don't see that in a lot of cars, but I guess it's to be expected in an M3, but I did think that was pretty cool though, so. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And by the way, the standard sound system, a 16 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system with 464 watts. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> I gotta be honest, you guys, I don't really care for that song, but that bass was rumbling the seats. That is how amazing that sound system was, let me tell you. Another thing, to actually turn off the radio there, what I did, I used gesture control. You don't always find that on BMWs, and I wasn't sure if the M3 was gonna have it, but it does. So I can actually turn my finger in a clockwise motion to turn up the radio, and then counterclockwise to turn it back down. There's a couple of different other gestures you can play around with as well, but I was surprised, and I was very happy to see that the M3 does have gesture control there as well, which I kinda liked. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the M3 in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And there is a 360 degree monitor available as well. So you can see from all angles what is around you so you don't go banging up your car or running anyone or anything over, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so let me start by saying the 2020 standard three series BMW is an IIHS top safety pick. Typically, IIHS doesn't test out cars like the M3 but you would imagine it would be along the same line. So wanted to mention that front side side curtain airbags do come standard, knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks also coming standard, front and rear parking sensors, frontal collision warning system, blind spot monitoring system, lane departure warning, speed limit recognition then as well. So essentially all of the safety coming standard across the board, but Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the M3, personally, I think it is awesome that a car like the M3 still offers a manual transmission. If you do go with the eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, that is definitely plenty good as well, let me tell you. But still, the manual transmission is nice if you wanted to go ahead and drift this thing because it is a really good drift car. I've seen that on YouTube plenty of times as well. So that's gonna be there for you. I personally love the all wheel drive system on the competition just because I live in Pennsylvania and it comes in handy every now and then. But like I said earlier, it really does give you the best of both worlds because you can choose to send all of that power to the rear wheel still with the all wheel drive setup if you wanted to. Overall, this is a great performance sedan. Plenty of options on this one, not only when it comes to the performance side of things, but also the color setups as well. Not only on the X exterior like I was mentioning but the interior actually does have quite a few different color configurations you can go with as well but overall let me know what you guys think of the new M3 in the comments section below and I know a lot of you guys are going to say I don't like the front grille look at it in person go out to a BMW go out to Apple BMW in York PA and look at this front grille it is so aggressive in person it is so menacing I'm telling you guys, go out and look at it. It's amazing. That is about it for this one though. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all 
in the next video. Thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. I'll probably end up doing a video eventually about that, but I do appreciate each and every subscriber, you guys. I really do. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay golden.